Hi everybody, this is Joe. And this is Jenna. From Fantastic Reviews, with this week's In Case You Missed It. Covering the smaller stories that may have gotten buried underneath the bigger stories that happened over the course of the week. First up this week, we are talking about the Baby Groot comic. That is right, Marvel is going to be putting out a comic centered around Baby Groot. It's uh, slated to come out around May of 2017, which is right in line with Guardians of the Galaxy 2. The title of the comic is going to be I Am Groot. Uh, it <laughs> is being drawn by Flaviano, who has also drawn um, Grayson and uh, Harley Quinn and Power Girl for DC Comics. Mm -hmm. He's also drawn for Power Man and Iron Fist for Marvel. It is being written by Christopher Hastings, who also writes Adventure Time. And Deadpool. I like both of them. Um, I wonder though if it's going to fall in line with the other group comic that they made, which I believe was just a one shot for a bit, and it was just it said just I am Groot to the entire thing. Groot did have yeah. his own comic for a while. Um, it was about him getting separated from the rest of the Guardians and trying to find his way back to Rocket. This new series is actually again he's separated from the rest of the Guardians and basically he's trying to find his way back. Seems to be a Recurring theme with him. It'll be cute because he's a baby. <laughs> Groot was not really a huge character until the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie came out, and then he found a legit cult following. Because everybody loves Groot. Groot is all is who we all hope we could be one day. How could you not like Groot? I have a pop of Groot on my desk at work. They really Marvel is really good about um, character development. Yeah, character development and cashing in on it too. Yeah. So. Going into some TV news, Lucifer has been renewed for a season three. Thank goodness. That is one less show I have to worry about. Still trying to get Gallivant. But, you know, in the meantime, we have Lucifer. So that, that's great. Um, season three will have a full, um, a full season of 22 episodes. And the last six episodes of season two will start again in May. Um, May 1st. May 1st. To so. be exact. I love the show. I just hope bringing <laughs> God in doesn't jump the shark. I don't think it will. I don't think it will. And again, maybe there'll be a musical episode. Why do you want a musical episode so bad? Because Tom Ellis can sing. All along the watchtower. And so can and so can the guy playing God. I super believe in you, Tad Cooper. Hey little fella, I know just what you're thinking. <laughs> and I just want them to have I just want them to sing at each other for like the full half hour. Just it's just a musical, just them arguing in song. That would be great. I don't think it fits the tone of the show. I think it does. Moving on, it's some <laughs> movie news. Uh, longtime collaborator of the Halloween series, Danny McBride, has announced uh, some new details following the new Halloween movie that's supposed to be coming out in October of 2018. This is not going to be a reboot. This is not going to be a remake. This is going to be a continuation of the same story in the same mythos following the first two Halloween movies. Um, John Carpenter is back in the mix, so he saw something that he liked because uh, after the second movie, I think he kind of took a step back and really didn't have much to do with the Halloween franchise at that point. So whatever Danny McBride and company is doing, John Carpenter is interested and wants in. I'm excited for it if John Carpenter and Danny McBride are going to be involved together. But at the same time, I know we've mentioned this before, you got to make some new movies, guys. Halloween is a great movie. It's fun. Uh, the first two were fantastic. The other ones were just something that you watch if you're bored. Uh, that, not that they're not entertaining and they don't have their own value, but how many times do we need the same story before we get a new movie that's something that does something different? If John Carpenter likes it, though, then he must be doing something that he likes. That's all that I know. That is true. I mean, John Carpenter doesn't have to do anything he doesn't want to do at this point in time. But So I guess we'll see. Um, but in the vein of reboots and sequels, Godzilla 2 will start production in Atlanta in June. So that's pretty exciting. I really enjoyed the first one. I thought that was super cool. I My heart went out to the monsters, though. <laughs> I could care less about the human beings. Um, the second Godzilla movie will be titled Godzilla... King of the Monsters, and it should come out in about 2019. The reboot of the Godzilla movie with um, uh, Brian Cranston in it, uh, which we did a podcast on, by the way, we'll link that as well, 
Uh, it was a surprise hit uh, yeah. because they tried bringing back Godzilla in, I think it was like 1998, 1999. Didn't work so well. Wasn't so hot. That had Matthew Broderick in it. He's kind of eh. Well, it is. they were trying to jump on board with all the special effects at that time, and it fell into the same vein, I think, of other movies where they just relied way too much on special effects and not enough on story. Which it's a Godzilla movie. Do you need too much of a story? Some could argue no. But the recent Godzilla movie was a surprise hit. It brought in over five hundred million dollars in the box office. Um, so it's going to be interesting to How see do what they do. Remember these it? things. $500 million at the box office. I don't even remember I read. when it came out. I read. <laughs> I read. <laughs> the cool thing, though, is that they are planning to bring in some new monsters. There are some, some rumors going around as to who might be coming in. One of the big rumors that might be coming in Godzilla 2 is Mothra. Yay! Fan favorite villain, enemy, monster. It's someone Godzilla fights. Mothra. Hmm. So, so Mothra yeah. are a problem in this universe. So expect Godzilla, King of the Monsters, for a 2019 release. I'm excited for it. If it follows anything like the first movie did, it'll be a good movie. You could take out the humans, though. I don't, <clears throat> I don't care about any of them. In more sequel news, yeah. Sophie Turner has confirmed that a new X-Men movie is in production. Rumors are that it is, could possibly follow the Dark Phoenix storyline because we kind of saw flashes of that at the end of Age of Apocalypse. Is it Age of Apocalypse or do I just keep saying it? No, it's Age of Apocalypse. Wait. It's, I don't know, something Apocalypse. Apocalypse. It's Apocalypse, whatever. It came out and it's Age of Ultron and then Age of <laughs> Extinction. Awesome. And then... I keep saying Age of Apocalypse. That's probably wrong. Anyway, um... So we did see that at the end of the last X-Men movie, where we caught flashes of Phoenix uh, in, in Sophie Turner's character, who she's playing Jean Grey. So, and I think that was always kind of a thing with Jean, was that uh, she had Phoenix like inside of her, but because she never quite fully understood her own uh, mutant power, she never could really fully understand what Phoenix was doing to her. So, but that begs the question a lot of people are a asking online, do we need an X-Men movie every year or every other year? Is it watering down the franchise? A lot of people weren't happy with Age of Apocalypse. Age of whatever, fucking Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people were not happy with the Apocalypse movie. I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. I, I really enjoyed the first class series of movies um, following the younger team. I liked it. Although I can see why people had problems with it, it wasn't a perfect movie. No movie ever is. Um, I can see why fans would have issues with it, though. It did seem to kind of escalate very quickly through everything that happened. So, mm, it's give or take. I really did enjoy it, though. I'm looking f I would be looking forward to the next movie, especially if it's a Dark Phoenix movie. Um, that's something we haven't gotten to see yet. We well, did, we did kind of. We didn't get to see the dark. Stand. We didn't get to see the Dark Phoenix movie they wanted to make. Yeah, we got to true. see the Dark Phoenix, ish, Jean Grey is crazy movie. That's the dumpster all we really fire got to they see. came up with. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll give it a shot. I think this round of movies is doing great, and maybe you're getting too many of them, but they're different movies every time. First Class is kind of in its own universe, apart from the rest of the X Men movies. And just like all the Wolverine movies seem to be their own thing each time. I feel like just a lot of like people, the comic books. <laughs> I feel like a lot of the people that are upset about this are the purists, though, who go back to the original canon. They're like, "Well, this isn't the original story," and it's not. It's not the original story. Yeah. We already know they they rebooted the franchise. They rebooted everything. They kind of retconned everything, and they're starting over fresh. So. You have to kind of look at this storyline as a brand new storyline that has not been told before. Into another sequel. Suicide Squad 2 is in talks with Mel Gibson to be the director of the second Suicide Squad. I don't know that we need more racism <laughs> in the Suicide Squad than was already in the first one, however unintentional it may have been. Mel Gibson, he's a pretty good director. He's a terrible human being, but he's a pretty good director. Man, when he was young, though, you didn't even see all the terribleness. He was yeah. just he was just hot and crazy. He was in that great point on the hot, crazy scale that was just perfect. Then he just got way too old. Now he's just a crazy guy with a beard. I don't know how to handle that. 
But the problem with Mel Gibson is that he has been pretty vocal about his distaste for superhero movies. Uh, he basically calls Batman vs. Superman a steaming pile of shit, which it was, it was. in his defense. So I agree. <laughs> but he also calls the Marvel movies more violent than anything he would ever have done. And I beg him to reconsider Lethal Weapon. Did he remember the movie he directed where he just beat Jesus for like two hours? <laughs> that was his movie. <laughs> like, I don't think we've seen a Marvel movie where someone just gets pretty much tortured for two whole hours. Saw. Yeah. I, Mel Gibson is crazy, man. Mel Gibson does not seem like a good fit for this movie. Well, I, I don't think know. they I mean, need to look at other avenues. Crazy is as crazy does, so maybe it'll be good. They're in talks. He hasn't been confirmed. He's just been approached. We'll see what happens. I think it, this was uh, uh, kind of described as a first date with the DCEU. Finally, this week, we've been talking about this for a couple of weeks because something seems to keep happening every week on this front. The Batman has lost another director, reportedly. But DC is not doing well at directors, man. Like, I don't, I don't know what's happening over there. Matt, Dre Matt Reeves has decided to drop out of negotiations to direct the Batman. There has been no public reason that has been released why, um, but they are hoping that they can reestablish negotiations with him. If not, they already kind of have Ridley Scott picked out to take over the director's chair. Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott. That would be interesting. Yeah. Is Batman going to fight Predator and Alien in that one? Well, I mean, he we did see the... Um, Parademons. The Parademons. So, I mean... We don't fucking need Darkseid and everything. <laughs> That's a Justice League movie. I don't need that in Batman. Batman is Batman and can do his own thing. I don't know. I'm just... I'm so frustrated. It's it's really I'm weird so that DC seems to have repeated problems with uh, directors. I have a theory that maybe it's because um, this Zach movie Zeger screwed it all up, and now they're very concerned. Another theory if, of mine, and this is in no way based in anything I've ever heard. This is just a thought that I've had in my head. I'm thinking that it's because this movie is pretty much Ben Affleck's brainchild, mm. and. He he probably wants to keep to a certain standard. He probably wants to keep certain things that are non-negotiable that directors love to change things. And directors don't like to be told that they don't that they can't change things. So that I can see a, a, a conflict of interest, an artistic conflict, I guess, whatever you want to call it. Again, this is just my thought. This is not based on anything I've ever heard or read. It's, it's just a thought. It's I mean, it's a good thought. Directors are notoriously... Cry babies sometimes, but so are actors, and so are editors, and so is anyone involved in any kind of creative process because your process is the best process. And no one else can touch it. Everybody's and everybody thinks that. Story. <laughs> I mean, I I really don't know what to take away from this. I'm very concerned about what's happening with Batman. We've got rumors that an Affleck no longer wants to be Batman. We've got rumors that nothing's going well on the director front. We've got rumors the script has needs to be written. Rewritten from page one. No, the written's done. No, the script is done. Script is done, script is and done. the rumors out there that it needs to be rewritten from page one. So really, I missed yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a rumor. Nothing has been released. It's just something circulating online that the the directors want to rewrite it from page one, which makes you go, "Fuck!" If that needs rewritten all the way from page one, that's a problem. There was a lot that came out this week about the rumor of Ben Affleck probably trying to get out of the Batman role, trying to get out of his his uh, contract with DC. Because DC movies right now are a sinking ship that no one wants to be on, apparently. The guy claiming the rumor, his name is John Campea? John Campea? Something. I, something with a C. I have no idea what his ties are to the movie industry, but he said he's heard rumblings from a couple of different stories, uh, sources that Ben Affleck is not happy with the Batman role, that he wants to get out, that he can that he is trying to get out of his contract with DC. So he may not actually be in the Batman movie anymore. The last time we see him as Batman Bruce Wayne could possibly be in Justice League. Yeah. That's kind of sad to me because I will readily admit, and I say this every time, Ben Affleck was a great Batman. 
I didn't think he would be because I don't personally care for Ben Affleck as an actor, but I thought he was a great Batman. I think that's one thing that the majority of people agree on that he, was good out of Batman vs. Superman is that Ben Affleck was a great Batman. So to have him no longer want to be in it when he was so invested in it from the beginning is very disappointing. So that'll about do it for us this week. Yeah. Uh, what did you guys think of what we picked up on? Do you have anything to add? Do you have any comments? Do you have anything we missed that you want us to cover? Is there anything you want us to cover in these future episodes? Let us know uh, what your thoughts are on the Marvel v. DC. Um, let us know what your thoughts are on the fact that DC can't seem to keep a director. Where do you think all this is going to go? Where do you think uh, the role of Batman will go to if Ben Affleck does step down? Find us on Facebook. Find us on Twitter. The links are in the description below. Give us a like. Check out our Facebook page. And uh, subscribe to our channel. Yeah. Let us know that you like us by subscribing. Let us know that you hate us by double subscribing. That's you subscribing and then signing up one of your family members to subscribe. That way we know that you don't like us. <laughs> anyway. Thanks bye, for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs>